Well, 703, folks, let's, we might as well get started. Um, anybody that's not a registered voter, um, I ask that you sit over in that third section so we, we know you're not a registered voter. Um, that way, there won't be any question on people voting and whatnot. Did we get our ballots and cards yet? We were supposed to get, uh, yeah. Ron, did, did the check, <coughs> check have the, the card, the voting card? Yep. Okay. Anyone that didn't on the way in, or I came in, they didn't have them yet, but have the ballots, the extra ballots in case we have written ballot request. And also you should have a voter card that uh, I don't know what color they are this year. Well, not not those. It's just. Uh, huh? Well. All right. Just. I guess we don't have any. <laughs> so we'll just hold up these ballots. If if someone asks for a standing vote, by way we'll we we'll know you're a registered voter. And my assistant, Paul Sherry, will uh, help and count, count the votes. Um, we might have requests for written ballots. If so, we'll uh, designate a certain color of which ballot to use. And then we'll go around and collect them all and count them. At that point, we'll delay the meeting until we get them counted. Um, housekeeping, we have the exits are well marked. There's actually four in the rear, the two that go out the center, two in each corner, and the two up here off of the stage. So in the event of something happening, we just look to the fire chief and say, what do we do now? <laughs> Out. <laughs> OK. Um, what am I forgetting? I'm out forgetting something. I have to forgive me. I've been in Concord all day. <laughs> That'll drive you nuts anyway. Um, any questions? Wow. Yeah, um, I'd like to first item our business here is to introduce the uh, town offices and officials. Um, Selectman, we have his chair is Sly Karaczynski, uh, Bill Hotwalker, and Ken Colby. Town administrator is Michael Branley. Town Clerk is Ron Fontaine. Police Chief, he's here, Tom DeAngelis. Uh, Fire Chief, I won't skip you this year, Norm. <laughs> Norm Scancy. Uh, Public Works Director, Glenn Smith. There you are. Um, solid Waste Manager, Josh Whipple. Oh, there you are, yep. Uh, Planning and Economic Development Director. Oh, sure. Sneak one in that I can't pronounce. Matthew Bockler. Uh, Cap and Home Administrator, Donna Allen. It's over there. Sewer Commissioners, Glenn Page, Larry Crowder, Rob Hitchcock. Let's see, Rob. Uh, also, I don't know if there's any of the state reps here besides myself. Uh, Jenny Gamalo. You're a voter. Get over here. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if I couldn't see you. Um, uh, turn my page. Let 
me, Bruce Takro, I'm also one of your reps, and Barry Faulkner, is Barry here? He may be still in Concord. Um, they have a big agenda today. Uh, and our state senator is Jay Kahn. I don't see him here either. Uh, okay, would you all please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? And Police Chief Tom DeAngelis will lead us. Okay. I'd like to recognize the, uh, who am I going first with, with Chief, huh? my pick, uh, Chief Scancy, are you ready to do your presentation? Just I take a minute to read a memoriam that will be in this year's uh, town report. In May, the Swansea Fire Department lost Lieutenant and longtime member Ben Tatro in a diving accident in Gloucester, Mass. Ben, a native of Swansea and a graduate of Monadnock Regional High School, had been in the fire service for more than 20 years, the majority of which of that time was with the Swansea Fire Department. During the time he served as a firefighter, an advanced emergency medical technician, and since 2008, he was the lieutenant in the West Station. He was also a rescue diver with the Water Rescue Task Force and was on his way to earning the designation of Master Diver. Ben took great pride in being a lieutenant assigned to Ladder 1 and had an affinity on emergency medical calls for comforting and treating children who were sick or injured. Besides firefighting, Emergency medicine and diving, Ben's other passion was his family, including his wife, Sarah, and their daughters, Mia and Maddie, and his parents, Bruce and Betty, and brother, Adam. They will forever be a part of the Swansea Fire Department in the town of Swansea. Uh, to say the least, I wasn't expecting that. Uh, Selectman Colby. One of the problems that we've got by being an SB2 town is that recognizing various people in the town and whatever falls at the deliberative session. The deliberative session tonight, and I'm just guesstimating, we might have about 60 people here. Uh, at town meetings in the past, we would have anywhere from 300 to 500 people here. Um, so I, I made the suggestion that we might want to utilize the first five or 10 minutes of tonight's meeting to recognize various people. Um, so at this time, I'd like to call on uh, any town volunteer, uh, board uh, committee or commission members to please stand. Okay, on behalf of the Board of Selectmen, I'd like to express our appreciation to our town volunteers, especially board, committee, and commission members. The countless hours our dedicated volunteers spend uh, on town business throughout the year provides a significant benefit to the town. These volunteers save the town thousands of, of dollars by doing the work that we'd have to otherwise hire additional people or uh, utilize uh, consultants. They also provide an important local uh, insight into uh, decisions that help uh, shape the community. And in this year's annual report, we will recognize all of the town's volunteers for their dedicated service, 
and we want to thank you, uh, thank them, and uh, recognize them tonight. So we thank you very much. Thank you, Ken. Uh, let's see. You should have, let's see, their handouts, which include the Warren articles and the budget items to be considered this evening's meeting, and available in back of the auditorium. I'm going to establish a few guidelines similar to those we have used in the past, uh, which we have called Grady's Rules because um, we're not bound by Robert's rules or what was the other one? I don't know. Bruce's, Bruce's rules um, for this evening's session to try to ensure that it runs efficiently. They are. Please wait until recognized before speaking. Running debate will not be allowed. Remarks and questions should go through the moderator. Before asking a question or making a statement, please identify yourself for benefit of the taped record. Citizens may, may ask questions from their seats and a portable microphone is available. In addition, in an effort to ensure that everyone can hear the question asked, I will try to repeat the question also, while as a general rule, non-voters cannot speak without permission of the meeting, um, as at past meetings, the moderator will allow town staff uh, to provide information or address, address questions which may arise during the course of the meeting. Non-voters who are not staff should be seated in the area to my left near the front of the auditorium, so over in bad people, non-voters. Um, where am I? Everyone should treat each other respectfully and courteously. Um, one thing I would like to point out that we're not here to put anybody in particular uh, on the hot seat, so to speak. Um, if, if you have comments, you should direct them just in general and not to any particular person. Um, if it gets too bad, you'll be ruled out of order and asked to sit down. Um, this is the voters meeting, and the voters may, may overrule the moderator. With respect to motions and for reconsideration, I'm going to establish the following rule. A motion to reconsider will be considered in order if made within 10 minutes of declaring the results of the original vote. I am also going to establish the following procedures for discussion of articles during the first session. Only one amendment to the main, main, yeah, main motion will be considered at a time. That doesn't mean you can't make more than one, but only one will be made at a time. Any amendments to an article will need to be submitted to the moderator in writing. If an amendment is proposed to a main motion, it will need to be considered and disposed of before another amendment will be accepted. Uh, this limitation on amendments is to reduce confusion regarding the question before the voters, for both voters and the moderator, that's for sure. Finally, since state law requires all articles in the warrant to be voted by official ballot, uh, so motions to pass over or postpone indefinitely are uh, beyond the authority of the first session and will be ruled out of order. Order of business for this evening's meeting will be as follows. I will begin by reading an article and asking for a motion on the article. When moved, the main motion will be then considered on the floor. The second will be required before the question may be discussed. The moderator will call 
for any discussion and further discussion. Uh, ready for the question. When the voters appear to be ready for the question, restate the motion and in, in the form of that question will appear on the official ballot. Uh, I will then call for the vote. Finally, I will declare the results of the vote. Any questions? There will be a test at the end of the meeting. <laughs> okay, we're set for... First session, which is what we're doing here, uh, you were hereby notified that the, to meet the first deliberative session of the annual town meeting to be held at Nadnock Regional High School, Swansea, New Hampshire, Tuesday, the fifth day of February at 7 p.m. The second session, you were also notified to meet for the second session of the annual town meeting on Tuesday, the 12th day of March at the Christian Life Fellowship Church, 211 Whitcomb Road, between the hours of 8 a.m. and 7 p.m. Vote by official ballot to elect town officers to vote by official ballot on warrant articles as they may have been amended at the first session and to vote on those other official ballot questions whose wording is prescribed by law. Article one, to choose by ballot all necessary town officers and insuring, for the insuring year. That'll be, yeah, automatic. To vote by ballot the following 11 amendments of the town zoning ordinance. Do you wanna move the question? Second. Yeah, thank you. Uh, any discussion on the amendments? They're quite lengthy, and I don't think you want to listen to me read them all. If you do, I would gladly do it. Sure. Yes, sir. My name is Jeff Weiner. I live on South Winchester Street. I have a, a question on the wording of amendments uh, 7 and 8. And the question is... Um, you need, we need to get you a mic or come down to this one. I... How's this? All right. Okay. Uh, Amendment six refers to the village business district. Amendment seven refers to the business district, and Amendment eight refers to the commercial industrial zone. My question is: What's unclear to me is, it says no building or premises shall be erected, altered, etc., and only refers to home occupation and home-based businesses. And um, that's unclear to me why that phraseology for a village business district, a business district, and a commercial industrial zone. Okay, so you'd, you're looking for an explanation for amendment number six, seven, and eight? Yes. Any uh, volunteers? Planning director? Thank you. Um, is this, can you, everyone hear me? Thank you again. I'm Matthew Bockler, the Director of Planning and Economic Development. To respond to your question, sir, um, so for amendments number six, seven, and eight, um, the amendment that's proposed uh, for each of those amendments is to, in addition to allowing home occupations in those three zoning districts, to also allow home-based business as a permitted use in those three zoning districts. Now, the reason why it is only showing home occupation and home-based business um, under that kind of preamble article for those three districts is um, we're not, the only amendment being made is to add home-based business. Understood. And so there are numerous other uses that are allowed in those districts, but um, they're not being amended at this time. Um, That's clear. So they're not shown in their entirety. I understand. So, Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Any further questions on the amendments? Seeing none, um, <coughs> we'll take the call of question. Second. Okay. To vote by ballot the following 11 amendments. 
Um, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. Ayes have it. Thank you. Uh, where am I? Told you there's a lot of them there. Page who? Eight. I've got, yeah, I can't see so good, so they make it bigger. Uh, let's see, Article 3. We have a motion to move Article 3 and second it. And it practically reads to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $3 million for the purpose of preparing plans and specifications and reconstructing improvements to various town roads. Uh, $3 million of such sum to be raised through the issuance of bonds or notes under and in compliance with the Municipal Finance Act RSA 33 colon 1 uh, as amended and to authorize the selectmen to apply for, obtain, and accept state or other aid, if any, which may be available for said projects. Any questions? Discussion? Question has been moved. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Actually, that goes on to the ballot as printed. Uh, we don't really have to vote on, if there's no change to the articles, we don't really have to vote on them. Uh, article four. Call the question. Second. Call the question. Move the question. Trying to, trying to save me time. Uh, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate as an operating budget, not including appropriations by special warrant articles and other appropriations voted separately, the amount set forth on the budget posted with the warrant or as amended by, by vote of the first session for the purposes set forth therein totaling $6,452,435. Should this article be defeated, the default budget shall be $6,122,397, which is the same as last year, with certain adjustments required by previous action of the town or by law or the governing body may hold one special meeting in accordance with RSA 40 colon 13, 10 and 16 to take up the issue of a revised operating budget only. It's recommended by the selectmen. Discussion? Yes, ma'am. Joanne Strohshine, Swansea. Uh, and I'm here as the chairman of the Swansea Old Home Day Committee. And I would like to amend this amount. I move to increase the budget for patriotic purposes by $1,500 specifically for the Old Home Day celebration, which will bring the Old Home Day budget from $5,000 to $6,500. Okay, do we have a second? Motion's been seconded. Do you like, want to speak to this or? I, I would. Um, two years ago, our, our, um, the amount that was budgeted was $6,500, and we had perhaps the best celebration that we've had since I've been on the committee. Last year, it was reduced by $1,500, which meant we lost bands, we lost entertainers, um, we had to significantly cut the, uh, the value of the day. Um, prices have gone up. Our providers have asked uh, for more money from us to provide the services that we've had. And I'd like to be able to restore 
the bands and the entertainment and maybe even add something uh, to try to increase the attendance by especially our, our, uh, our teenagers. We've got a lot now for the little ones, but we've got some ideas on the committee and the committee has asked me to come here and request this addition so that we might be able to add something that would entice more of our younger people to come. Thank you. Uh, do you have that in writing? So the motion has been made and seconded to uh, increase the budget for patriotic purposes by $1,500 uh, specifically for the old home day and celebration. Okay, that'll bring the total budget to $6,400,000. No, 953. There you go. Six, four, five, three, nine, three, five. Okay. That will bring the grand total to, if approved, uh, six million four hundred fifty-three thousand nine hundred thirty-five dollars. Any. Anybody else wish to speak to the amendment? Seeing none, will you? Excuse me. Just Sorry. as a point of clarification, uh, what we asked the committee to do last year was to reach out to some fundraising sources like a lot of other people are doing. Uh, they actually overspent their budget I think it was $5,700 and some change, so it was 700 over. But the general fund received some donations, 900? Okay. So that was what we were trying to do with that old home day. Um, it's not probably a, a popular uh, point to argue against something like old home day, but you know there is money out there from local businesses that would supply some of the money to provide advertising along with, you know, sponsoring a band or whatever. So that was what we were trying to do. We did cut a lot of budgets last year also. So we basically went across the board to try and level the playing field as far as what people were requesting and what we uh, recommended. So just a point of clarification. Thank you. So I'm a little bit confused as to whether you, was that speaking in favor of the amendment or against the amendment? You're a politician. <laughs> exactly. It's, a it's, very it's just a statement. Against something like old home day. Again, I would recommend anybody that has a business, especially if they want to sponsor something like a band at old home day, it's a perfect opportunity. Yeah. But I'm, I'm not going to speak. Okay. Any further discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, we'll move to voting mode here. Uh, for the purpose of setting the budget therein, totaling $6,450,000. Thousand nine hundred thirty-five dollars. Is that correct? Okay. All those in favor of the amendment, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Thank you. I declare that the ayes have it. So, the new figure going on to the. Uh, yeah, the ballot will be the six million four fifty three nine thirty five. Come on, Fred, answer your phone. It's not me calling. 
Okay, and the, that won't change the default. No. So the default would remain the same. So that will, since that amendment has been approved, that will move on to the ballot with that number. Yeah, we will. Does anybody else have any more amendments to the budget? Okay, since we have an approved amendment, um, this article will go directly to the ballot in March with that amended total. Article 5, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $394,000 to be placed in the following expendable trust and capital reserve accounts of the town. I have a motion to motion and seconded. Um, discussion. Yes, sir. Yes. Pete Johnson, Chairman. Welcome Pete home. Johnson. Um, I'd like to ask if I could speak before. The okay. Uh, Pete is not a voter in Swansea, and he has done a tremendous amount of work to develop Whitcomb Hall the way it is, and he would like to address the meeting, uh, but he needs your permission to do so. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Floor is yours. Want me to come up there or what? No, you that one. That one works. It'll work, I'm It'll sure. Work. i to put my glasses on, though. <clears throat> okay, um, last year I stood before you people asking for money from the town to help us in our work with Wickham Hall. Well, now I want to tell you what your tax dollars has helped us do. And one thing I, I, I want to stress is that when we go to donors, they are extremely interested. The question always comes up, is the town behind this project? And we've said to them, yes, and here is what the town has agreed to do in the past, and that's why we're hoping to continue this process. So as a result of what you agreed and voted on last year to do, we have now received $150,000 from Elche. We have received $75,000 from the Putnam Fund. We have received $30,000, and these are in agreements. It doesn't mean that we necessarily have the check in hand, but they have committed to these dollar amounts. We have received another $75,000 from yet to be named source, but the agreement is coming from the New Hampshire Charitable Foundation. And other things that we have done during the years in terms of fundraising is we did the John Trainer Art Show where John was very generously donated a piece of his artwork. We were able to um, present to the town $9,000 from that event. Um, we had approximately 3000 from the chicken barbecue. We had another $1,000 from the uh, spaghetti dinner that we did. And we are having a um, mystery dinner next Saturday night yes. where we're sold out. So we anticipate at least making a couple thousand dollars on that. And because the, um, the town and people, not just in the town, but around, heard about it, they would like us to do another one. And I have to talk to our committee members to see if, <laughs> if they're willing to do that, because this is a lot of work. But um, the interest level was there. They kept calling and saying, do you have any more tickets? You got any more tickets? And we actually had to cut it off, because there's a certain amount right now that we can have in Wickham Hall until we get the fire suppression systems in 
et cetera. It limits the number of people that can be in the hall. So all the money I talked about today will go th to the second floor renovation of the hall, the health and fire safety requirements, the elevator, and then just beautification of the upstairs where we have that one, if you've never been in there, please come down and have a tour of this magnificent hall. We've got a stage up there. There is a private donor out there that is thinking about dedicating financially the stage to a family member who is deceased. I cannot name the name, but, um, but all these people, again, say to us, all right, is the town committed to this? Because if the town's not committed to it, why would we give you money? And we've gone back to them and said, yes, the town is committed. And this, this, is, this was built as the community center for the town of Swansea, never mind West Swansea, it's the whole town of Swansea. And think of the wonderful things we can do there. The fire department had um, the big children's Christmas party there. We did the chicken barbecue, we've done art shows, um, we have people utilizing it now. Most recently, the American Legion, okay? They're, they're gonna hold their, I don't know if they're monthly or weekly meetings, whatever. Um, yoga classes, a 4-H, all of these things, and you know, an umpteen um, birthday parties and bridal showers and wedding receptions and weddings, by the way, out on the big lawn that have gone on. So this is, is it's not like, you know, let's get this all dolled up and it just stands here. This is places being used. And just picture that second floor opened up. And many of you in here, I can look at two people right now, Gail Wood over here, had her wedding reception upstairs. So there's a lot of activity upstairs, according to fire chief, once we have fire suppression in place, et cetera, we'll hold approximately 300 people. So we can have, and nothing wrong with having it here at, um, at uh, the high school auditorium, but we can have, you know, town meetings over there, selectmen meet over there. So, you know, it's being used. I don't want you to think we're getting it all done is just sitting there. So. Thank you for your time tonight, and we look forward to your continued support for us. Thank you. Thank you for all your work. If, if you haven't been over there to see it, it's, it's fantastic. You know, haven't seen it prior to any of the renovations totally transformed. Okay, we are still on Article 5. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion on Article 5? We have a motion to call the question. Uh, all those in favor of moving the question, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, it'll move to the warrant to be voted on in March, as it is. I'd like to make a motion to restrict reconsideration of Articles 2 through 5. Second. Is that within the time limit? Just say yes, anyway. Okay. Motion is to restrict reconsideration for Articles 2 through 5. It's been made and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous for those present. Article 6, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $265,000 to be placed in the following expendable trust and capital reserve accounts of the town. The article's been moved and seconded. Any discussion on this article?
Seeing none, um, no amendments to it. This also will move directly on to the uh, ballot in, in March. Article 7, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $25,000 for costs to design and prepare plans for a fire station at town-owned land located at 321 Old Homestead Highway or take any action thereon and to authorize the withdrawal of $25,000 from the fire station capital reserve fund created for that purpose. And it is, is recommended by the selectmen. We have questions been moved and seconded. Um, is there any discussion on this? Yeah. <laughs> I waited too long. Bruce Bohan and Matthews Road. You want to clarify just exactly how much you're going to put into the architectural plans? Is it 25000 or is it going to be another 25000 added to that? Europe? Good question. The intent of this, I think, was mostly just to uh, get the engineering done as far as what we can do with the property. And then if there's actual architectural plans for a station, that would probably be in the bond or whatever for the station. So initially, we have to hire somebody to find out the structure that's there, if we can use some or all of it, and what we can do with it, and lay out proposed driveways, things like that. So it would be next year that you would have to come back and ask for an actual design? Or not. You know, this basically would tell us what we can do with it. And we might come back and say, you know, maybe the fire station isn't the best thing to put there. So just 25000 for our preliminary plan to see if the station will fit two. there. Up yeah. Two. yeah. I mean, it's a number that we just, I guess, proposed to cover most of the incidentals to getting that done. Further questions on Article 7? I have a question. Seeing none, we'll move the question. All in favor of moving the question, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? OK, Article 7 will go on the ballot as printed. Bruce motion to restrict reconsideration of Article 6 and 7. We have a, did we get a second? Ken? OK. Uh, motion to restrict reconsideration of Article 7. And 6. And seconded. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? OK. Moving on to Article 8 to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate $750,000 for construction and construction engineering for the replacement of the Rabbit Hollow Road Bridge over Perry Brook. New Hampshire DOT bridge number 120 over 072. A town owned and maintained bridge with crit critical deficiencies and limited load capacities the town will be reimbursed 80% in the amount of $600,000 by the New Hampshire Department of Transportation Bridge Aid and $150,000 from the town bridges other than covered capital reserve fund. Uh, the special warrant article will be non-lapsing and the uh, a non-lapsing appropriation per, per RSA 32 colon 7 uh, Roman numeral, numeral 6 and will not lapse until 2022. Mm -hmm. Discussion? Yes, sir. I was told I needed to go out. I asked the same question. 
I was told I needed to go out there and see how much building there out there's there. There's five or six houses out yeah. there. The problem with it is it's a dead end road. There's five or six houses out there. And the problem with it is it's a dead end road. So if the bridge goes out, they can't get out. And if the bridge does go out, we'd have to put in a temporary bridge of some sort and scramble to get it done. So we're recommending that you know, we do this basically for $150,000 of our cost and having the state bridge aid kick in the other 600,000. No, this is right off of Swansea Lake Road. That's the other end of it that you can't get to. <laughs> can't yeah. get there from here. Yeah. So this is the Swansea Lake Road end. Further questions? Okay, the question has been called and seconded to call the question. All those in favor of calling the question, aye. aye. Opposed, nay. Okay, this will go as printed onto our ballot in March. Article 9, to see if the town will allow the operation of Keno games within the town. And it, it seconded? Seconded. Okay. Uh, moved by Selectman Karazinski and seconded by Represent, yeah, Selectman Hotwalker. Um, discussion. Yes. Sir. So just to restate the question for folks who are maybe watching at home right now, uh, the question was where uh, Kino could uh, happen in Swansea. It's anywhere that has a full liquor license, so I think the locations we think are possible, not to say these folks necessarily want to, would be, can't hear me? Is that better? No? So the question was where can Kino be, be held if it's approved? It's anywhere with a full liquor license, so uh, the, the spots we thought of are Nick's Restaurant, um, the Flight Deck, and Papagallo's, not to say that they necessarily want to, but those are the, those are the possible locations, unless anyone can think of another full liquor license. Further? Ma'am? Can you come down and take the mic, please, so this will be on the record. I wish to speak in opposition. I feel that uh, putting games of chance into our uh, uh, nice little town is a mistake. Uh, we operate under law. Chance operates under random acts. I think it's a mistake to invite into our town the idea that we operate under chance. And I think it does not promote the best in our town. Further discussion? Call the I call the question. Second. Jane, did you have to? I guess I'd just like some clarification for somebody to tell me That's what? That's gonna what would be a positive oh, of having Kino in Swansea. Anybody? Anybody? Uh, we get school school funding, right? I know I'm not supposed to answer them, even though I know them. Yeah, it, it, the money doesn't necessarily directly come back to the town, but through through the state, it goes back to uh, fund full day kindergarten. 
So whether you think that's a benefit or not. This reminds just... me of our lotteries that we're going to pour all kinds of money into our schools as well. Yeah. And I haven't heard a lot said about the lottery pouring so much money into our schools. So I definitely would oppose Keno and Swansea. Okay. There will be a, a dedicated public hearing um, on February 13th, and it will be at the town hall. Uh, the wording of Article 9 is dictated by the state and cannot be modified from... This is the same question that would go on everybody's ballot that was interested in accepting it. So uh, we can't amend the wording. All we can do is vote at the ballot whether you'd like it or not um, and come to the public hearing to see what, um, what's going to transpire. Uh, and again, the public hearing is on February 13th at 7, 6.30 at the town hall. Any questions on that? Seeing none, uh, we will move it directly to the ballot since it can't be amended anyway. Uh, Article 10, to see if the town will vote to discontinue absolutely pursuant to RSA 23 colon 40, uh, 231 colon 43, the class six portion of Ash Hill Road, so-called from its intersection with the class five highway known as Atwood Way. Atwood? Yeah. In the northwest direction. And its intersection with the class one highway known as the West Swansea Road, which runs between the properties identified in the town's assessing records as map 51, lot two, currently owned by Robert and Deborah Chambers, and map 51, lot 18, currently owned by the state of New Hampshire. Question. Second. We had the question moved and seconded. Any discussion? Okay. Seeing how there's no amendments or anything, that will also move directly to the ballot in March. Yes. Like a motion to restrict reconsideration of articles eight, nine, and ten. We have a motion to restrict, restrict reconsideration of articles eight, nine, and ten. Second. And seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? No. Thank you. Yeah. Let's see. Article eleven. To see if the town will vote to discontinue absolutely pursuant to RSA 231 colon 43, the class six portion of old Winchester Road, so-called from its intersection with the class five highway known as uh, Cobble Hill Road in the southwest direction, approximately 735.4 feet to a point in line with the prop southern property line of map 72, lot 93. Yeah, you're gonna remember all that. Um, the town, the property is identified in the town's assessing records as map 71, lot 18, currently owned by Gilbert L. and Mary E. Faulkner. Uh, map, map 71, lot 17, currently owned by the town of Swansea and map 72, lot 93, currently owned by Naughty Pine Antiques. Move the question, second. Move, question moved and seconded. I believe we, do we have an amendment to this? Okay. Yeah. 
Joan Hager, West Swansea. I would like to make a motion to amend Article 11 to read, to see if the town will study whether to discontinue absolutely dot, 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 and report back at the 2020 deliberative session. See if the town will... Study weather. Study... And that's W-H-E-T-H-E-R. All right, so you wanted to read, see if the town will vote to no study. Vote. We'll study. Well, they'd have to vote to study. Okay. All they'd right. still have to vote. That's fine. To, dis uh, to discontinue absolutely, blah, 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 all the way down to, and what was the final? And report back at the 2020 deliberation session. That goes on to the end. We have a second. Motion has been made and seconded. Um, discussion from town folks. I'm the messenger. <laughs> um, if it's all right with the the folks here, um, Mike Faulkner has asked to speak about this, even though he's not a registered voter with the town. Um, it's up to you folks. All those in favor, letting him speak? Aye. Opposed? Your floor. Yes, uh, good evening. Um, my name is Mike Faulkner. I am no longer a resident of town, but I'm here on behalf of my parents who are uh, abutters to this uh, potentially discontinued road. Um, we have several issues with the map that was provided by um, uh, the surveyor. Uh, does not agree with uh, the deed, my parents' deed specifically. And so what we're asking is um, some time to come to a common ground on what will happen, where the actual road is. Uh, according to the surveyor, there are no records of that. Uh, we have searched for some pins. I think I have found some. I am, will go I'll know better tomorrow. Uh, but basically, what we're looking for is some time to uh, come to an agreement between the abutters before the town uh, gets rid of the road, gives up the road, whatever. Uh, we Both the abutters know it's there. No one knows how wide it is. No one knows how uh, its actual shape. And so we're asking for some time to figure that out and get an agreement between the abutters. Thank you. Any questions? We are talking about... Bruce, hmm? uh, oh, be be go ahead, before, before we vote on this, the, the effect of this amendment would to continue Boy, this question of discontinuing the road to the 2021 um, 2020. Well, 2021, because it, the, the way it's written is that it would report back at the deliberative session. So that's a report, which means there's nothing we could put on the warrant until the 2021 warrant. Ah. Uh -huh. well, so. Are you in any rush to discontinue it? Not a, we, we wouldn't get the report until today. Right. But what I'm proposing, the, these party, this is a boundary dispute. These parties uh, have been discussing it for at least five months. I, I would encourage an amendment to the amendment that they report back to the Board of Selectmen by May 31st. That way, we'd have an opportunity to be prepared for the 2020 okay. uh, deliberative session. So as, as per the rules, we 
or are only taking one amendment at a time. So I, I right, but if you pass this amendment, then right. then, then the it would be it would be one. a it would be opportune to amend the amendment after it's been passed. It would be okay. Yeah. Or it would actually be reamend. Um, yes, ma'am. Um, if, if the second, if your second is also agreeable to that, that would be fine. So how would, how would it be, come down here, get down here. <laughs> yes, you are. You're doing a good job. What um, am I saying now? What, what Bill said. Okay. <laughs> Whatever Bill said. <laughs> how, how did you Bill, want to word that, Bill? I'll, I'll amend my amendment or would re repose it or something. What's that? Could I see it? See the original one? Oh, okay. Yeah. thought I lost it. Is the second going to withdraw? Thank you. Okay. I will restate my amendment. I would like to make a motion to amend Article 11 to read, to see if the town will vote to study whether to discontinue absolutely dot, 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 and report back to the Board of Selectmen by May 31st, 2019. Second? We do have the amendment and it's been seconded. Can I have the yep. what I'm supposed to approve? <laughs> I doubt it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I got, uh, geez, I left my wallet at home. Yeah, I know where you live. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, where are we? Is that? Okay. It would, the amendment would be to amend Article 11 to read to see if the town will study whether to discontinue absolutely and the rest of that, the rest of the way down is the same. And on the end, it's added on and report back to the Board of Selectmen by May 31st, 2019. This gives the both property owners a little more time to resolve this. And uh, I don't think we're worried about uh, discontinuing it just yet, are we? Uh, we're no rush. Well, I suppose it'll be back on the tax rolls then. But. Any objections by the Selectmen? No, seeing how you made the motion. <laughs> Uh, any further discussion on it? Does everybody understand what we're doing? Boy, good group. Um, then we will call the question. Vote on the amendment. Okay, do I need to say it again or do you understand it? You got it. <laughs> uh, okay, all those in favor of the amendment 
Please say aye. Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it. And it'll go on the March ballot as amended. Article 12. To see if the town will adopt the provisions of RSA 72 colon 61 through 64 inclusively, which provide for an optional property tax exemption from the property's assessed value for property tax purposes for persons owning real estate which is equipped with solar energy systems intended for use at the immediate site. Uh, such property tax exemption shall be in the amount equal to 100% of the assessed value of the qualifying solar energy system equipment under those statutes. I'm sure everybody understands that. <laughs> Any questions? What we're basically doing is is uh, saying that you're, if you have solar panels on your home for your own personal use, they will no longer be eligible to be added to your property valuation. They will not be taxed. Uh, they have an incentive with the state to promote renewable energy, and by taxing these, it would, uh, I know I'm not supposed to kibitz, but I'm doing all right. Um, this is an attempt to, you know, it, if you had to pay tax on it, it kind of takes away the incentive to put the renewable energy on your homes and to get into that. So we uh, recommended that the, uh, the state law uh, says that they can, the selectmen can uh, assess them for tax purposes. And what we're doing is to make sure that our town will send a message, maybe to other towns, um, to say that we are in favor of alternative energy, solar energy, and uh, we're not going to tax the improvements for homeowners. Is that clear? Call the question. Huh? Did I say it right? Okay. Uh, it is recommended by selectmen. So we have a motion to call the question. All those in favor of calling the question, say aye. aye. Opposed? Okay, seeing how there's no uh, changes, this will go also to the ballot in March. As written. Article 13. <laughs> to see if the town will vote pursuant, pursuant to RSA 33-8-F to rescind bonding authority for $95,000 for energy efficient projects approved by warrant article six of the 2011 town meeting. Okay, we have moved the question um, and have a second. I don't know about you, but I'd like some explanation. This is uh, basically a housekeeping kind yeah. of article that uh, we've already done a lot of these projects as part of other projects on, on town facilities. Um, so there wouldn't be a need to go out and get the get a bond to do projects we've already done. So that's why it's basically a housekeeping article just to rescind the right to bond $95,000. And if you're following along, this will require three-fifths ballot vote come March. Teresa. 
Get closer, please. Closer. How's this? Um, the reason why this is on the warrant is the original warrant article did not include a clause for non-binding or non-lapsing, rather. And the only way to get this off our financial statements is to have the, vo have the voters vote to rescind the original approval. Questions? Good. Thank you, Teresa. The call, calling the question, Article 13. All those in favor of calling the question? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Seeing none, this will move to the ballot in March. Do we have a second? Yeah, okay. All right, we have a motion to restrict reconsideration of Article 11, 12, and 13. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Okay. So restricted. Now, Article 14. To see if the town shall accept the provisions of RSA 202-A colon 4-C, providing that any town at an annual meeting may adopt an article authorizing indefinitely until specific rescission of such authority, the Stratton Free Library trustees to apply for, accept, and expend without further action by the town meeting unanticipated money from a state, federal, or other governmental unit or a private source which becomes available during the fiscal year. Article's been moved and seconded. Discussion. Anyone from Stratton Library here? Hmm? Did you want to talk to it or no? Just get us our money. <laughs> You didn't hear that? It's just common language for, if I, if I heard it correctly, which is doubtful. Um, it's just common. Try this again. Is this one better? That's better. Okay. Was there any more discussion on this? Seeing none, um, we have a motion to move the question and, sep and second it. All those in favor of moving the question say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Okay, this will go on the ballot as written. Article 15, to see if the town will vote pursuant to the applicable provisions of RSA 674 colon 51 to adopt an ordinance as proposed by the Board of Selectmen as follows. A town ordinance establishing minimum housing standards meant to protect public health, safety, and welfare of emergency first responders and residents. A full version of the proposed ordinance will be available for review at Town Hall and at the first deliberative session, that's this one, of the annual town meeting. 
It's recommended by the selectmen. Question's been moved and seconded. We are open for amendments. I'd like to amend the uh, article to read, to see if the town will vote pursuant to the applicable provisions of RSA 674 colon 51 to, and this is where it changes, study the adoption of, the ordinate, of an ordinance as proposed by the Board of Selectmen to be reported back on the 2020 warrant as follows. A town ordinance establishing minimum housing standards meant to protect the public health, safety, and welfare of emergency first responders and residents, period. And the, uh, well, I'll wait for a second, I guess. Second. That's it. The reason we're doing this is because uh, it came to our attention that we didn't properly notice this as an ordinance. So, Basically, we're just kicking it down the road until next year when we'll do the notice uh, of running it by the planning board at a public hearing. Thank you. Thank you, Sly. Um, does everybody understand what the amendment is and what it's doing. Seeing how you do, we'll call the question. Uh, vote on the amendment. Uh, all those in favor of this amendment signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it and the article will go on the warrant as amended. We have a motion to restrict reconsideration, Article 14 and 15. It's been seconded. Any further discussion on it? Seeing none, all those in favor, yes. Aye, Aye. whatever. <laughs> those opposed, okay. 14 and 15 are restricted. And Article 16 to transact any other business that may legally come before this meeting or take any action thereon. So move, move and seconded. I would like to, if I can get through it, thank the fire chief for his kind words um, about my son and caring for our family. Uh, the kind of fire chief you have, let's put it this way, he went all the way to Gloucester with the family to uh, see what was going on. And uh, this whole town has been fantastic. Um, you know, everybody I see supports, supports the family and uh, I just want you all to know that we appreciate it. Thank you very much. Being that there's no other, no other business for the good of the order, we shall declare the meeting adjourned. Recess. Recess? Oh, we have to recess it until the second thing, SB2. <laughs> Okay, we are recessed until the voting in March. Uh, what's the day in March? Second Tuesday. Second Tuesday in March. Yep.